been speaking to, to James and I find some information I have is not quite up to date with a couple of the hill forts. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm used to another tiny thing. Yeah, this is uh, the sort of area we're talking about. Talican is up there, but I'm going to give a quick run through or fly over a one or two other sites which are more important probably, you may think, but uh, they are uh, different. And just a, a quick show of some of the more important ones. Dunadir, some information. I say it's probably out of date now, but uh, James can tell you later on. That's some of the dates that have come from that. So I'm having to lean over like this to change. <laughs> uh, Tapanoth, again, this is very recent to information coming about the dating shortly, but uh, I'm only going on what we've got, and we didn't have all that much on Tapanoth at the time I looked at this uh, not long ago. Oh, it's a hill fort, so it's not up to date. Uh, Remember the Tapaberry Heath? I think maybe it just takes it's tiny it pointed up towards the machine. Yeah. yeah. If I really get it, it's the worst button in the computer. Yeah. Well, you should name it a new computer. Well, Toon Hill in Angus. Again, it's a superb hill fort. Uh, not a huge amount of work done yet, but it will be coming shortly, I would think. That's all the information I have at, at the moment. I don't think we've got anything dating it at the moment. But it's it's an amazing site actually with so many uh, little parts in within it. Two hill forts in Angus, the two Catherton just on hills next to each other. They're really quite imposing when you go on them. Uh, say excavations been going on for a wee while or different things. And we do have dates from one of them, but not the other one as yet. But knowing Gordon Noble, I suppose he'll be getting in before too long, because he keeps zooming around. And this very lowland fort, partially excavated by C. Sir Walter Scott, and then in 72 by Laurie Wedderburn, who happens to be working with me just now on publication work. But we do have a couple of dates from it. And Dundark. Oh, it's all flipped. <coughs> this is all along the coast from Calican, actually. It's another promontory fort. Again, we've only got, we don't have any C14 dates as far as you know, but we do have a dated button. So that can give us a good idea of possible dating. <coughs> Then we're moving on to Calican itself, which is up in right in the northeast coast. It has been started in 1964, and as you can see, the dates there was a break in time, and then carried on until about 72. There are two interim reports, but the whole pre-strike site is never fully published yet. We have taken away the later stuff and published the medieval and the. 12th century. This is just to give you a rough idea of where it is. Pennon is quite well known. If you've ever seen the film Local Hero, it was filmed at Pennon. Uh, this is a, an estate map of uh, the 19th century, we think. And there's nothing to see of what was a castle or anything else. But you can see the area was arable, and this is quite a point when I'm with excavation. There was a bowling green and then what was called Fort Fidus. Uh, this is a, an early photograph. You can see one of the pavilions of the bowling green and some of the gun emplacements of the later of fort on the point. This is a, a site plan uh, of Cali Can. As you can see, most of the work was on the west side. We did dig a few trenches there, but nothing was found. They were destroyed by the Bowling Green and Fort Fidus. And the most uh, 
annoying bit of his site is the one with the key called the No, because that's got quite important stuff on it, but it was very mucked about by the medieval people. So it's causing a lot of headaches. This is the, the site from the sea, and you can see this is probably a much, much bigger promontory. <coughs> a lot of claps on the site, and this was probably all joined up. And I have got somebody working to try and reconstruct what the site would have been like if you go back through all the erosion. This is another, if you're looking down, and you can see all the claps as it is. And the earliest part of the site was down here. <coughs> And this is where we got phase one of about different phases. It's uh, nothing much left, and we didn't get any artifacts to help date it. Anything that we took for dating, uh, you'll, I'll explain later what happened about that. But all we can see, this site, which is this lot, small level, 1017, this area, all we can say about his dating is that it's much earlier than these, and it's sealed under the 0015 was a secondary topsoil, really quite thick topsoil, and it's sealed well under that. And the 0113 had a very, uh, we called it the midden, it wasn't really a midden, but uh, an awful lot of pottery came out of it. And it is above the 14th. So this is just a quick, a rough idea of where some of the sites are. The main, the knoll, which is the most complicated area, and then what we call Alpha 7 Beta 1, we'll see shortly. What did happen in, after that first uh, phase down slope, the second phase of people seemed to lay a whole load of pebbling over the whole site because it's boulder clay and if you've ever worked in boulder clay you know it's a nightmare to work on. The boulder clay sits on top of conglomerate and they've taken beach pebbles, a lot of work lay over the whole site but it gives you a stable walking area and working area. This is looking down on area no, it's just a <coughs> quick view to show you how complicated this area is. We did have a gateway which I'll come up with soon and show you more detail. We've got a palisade and a timber slot for a gateway, a hut which was probably used to two phases at least, a gateway which you'll see in more detail for phase three and then it was all scuppered by these people. <laughs> and they really did muck up the area. <clears throat> this is a sort of phase two, where the people who actually laid all the pebbling. What we've got on the way onto the site are a timber uh, um, palisade with a pot, looks like a timber slot for the gate. This is uh, the timber slot later on. And we think it was defended by this ditch, which was recut later on and was used through a couple of other phases, including a medieval phase. Oh, we just went by that, so never mind. I just carry on. Phase two in this area over here has got the remains of a ring ditch house. And another feature, which we're not quite sure of, is this here. And it was filled with uh, uh, reeds, damp reeds, not burnt. They were remains of reeds. A uh, number of post holes around about it. These two features are later. They are the next phase. But uh, what happened for the, the next phase coming, they seem to cover over the earlier gateway slot, there's a layer of pebbles going over the top of it. Uh, so this went out of use and they covered over it. Uh, looking towards the gateway, we got this massive timber gateway then built with another timber slot 
and a bit of walling still surviving. Not much, because the, the medieval people just tore out what they needed. That's the, the gate slot up above. Um, whether it's a sort of portcullis type, a drop-down gate, I don't know. It doesn't seem to make much sense having a, a gate opening and closing with stones up the edge of it. This is a, a view of the wall and the, the timber slot coming across into it. And what we did get were massive timber still surviving in some of the post holes. It's cut right across. Unfortunately, this one, uh, we did get a date from it, as you can see. But I wanted to get more information later on about this gate slot. But it was not in the good. It uh, had been left lying in that. Uh, I think it was in water, but it decayed so much that they couldn't do anything else from it. I won't tell you where it was, but it was not local. We then went back and took another timber slot much later in the 90s out, and these are some of the dates we got. Oh, they well moved. Oh. But we did get dates from the tree line from dental chronology, so. There's a lot of, of dating there, but we're going to re-look at these again because there's something odd about some of them. So an awful lot for you to actually read through, but that was from one other timber. These are all the individual rings from another timber. On to phase, in the other part of phase three, into this other area, and we're going to very much industrial use of this area. And as you can see, we've got a lot of uh, different types of working, hammer scale as well, suggesting smelting. And also what we did get was a complete, oh, that's it, showing a closer view of it, with this hearth lying over the rain ditch of the earlier phase two house. But again, ferrous and non-ferrous metal working. We've got furnace, more than one furnace actually, but this one was much better. Again, an awful lot of bog iron concentrated around this, this uh, furnace for some reason that wasn't found in other parts. And also a very odd thing was along the north side of the, the thing, um, these are earlier drawings, they're not my drawings, uh, what we got is along the north side was no, no walling, but remains of burning and upright stake holes. So there must have been some type of timber fence along the north side that got burnt down. You can see it in there. And underneath it runs the phase two occupation running right down. The phase three occupation stops at that fence line. It doesn't run any further. And it overlies two area post holes. These are some of the, the finds from, I think we've only got one glass bead compared to what you got in East moment, and that's all the glass beads we ever got. But we did get a complete, well, almost complete leather worker's knife which I'm still waiting for a report on. Um, jet or can of coal bracelets, it phrases down a report on. A few flints. The pottery itself is very mixed. It's nothing definite. It could be from either Iron Age, Bronze Age. It's the type of pottery that you can't really say, oh, this is definitely one or the other. Uh, we did get three shards of Neolithic pot, but whether that small platform site belongs to the Neolithic period, we don't know because we couldn't date it. But there's certainly something happening in the Neolithic period too. Going on to the phase four is when we start to get to see a change in the site, a vitrified rampart. Only on the west side of the site and along the north side of the site. 
Nothing was ever found on the south side or the east side because of the, the great tea erosion. So there's nothing to say that it, it wasn't there. It's not moving. Not moving. <laughs> <laughs> This is a, a, the section through the rampart showing the vitrification, great lumps of vitrification lying on the outside of the rampart that slumped out the way. And inside, the inner revetment was still there, two courses, but no evidence, it was too low for any evidence of timber lacing, but there was timber lacing lying transversely. Uh, one thing that did come up, and I haven't a clue what it is, so if anybody here has any idea why this is here. This bit here, we've no idea what it is. It doesn't seem to be associated with any particular. It's just a line of stones. Uh, no idea, so answers on a postcard. You see the burnt timbers line across the way and the dates. <coughs> These are the dates we got from them. And yeah, they sit in with quite a few good dates. These are just photo thin rubber timbers. But there doesn't really seem to be any any occupation really associated with this. No artifacts. <coughs> and it's always these small areas. So uh, whether this is building debris or not, I mean, you get, there was a few pieces of broken pot. I think it was a bit of crucible, fragment crucible. But this could have been from the start, how they were building the fort itself. There's no definitely associated. And it was only on the north side, the west side. Nothing was found on the north side, as you'll see shortly. These are site drawings at section just to show you the rampart itself. Come on. This is the outer rampart, it's, it's about two meters wide. Vitrification was mainly on the outside, you can see it here. Inside, revetment surviving, but also what was here looks like there was a secondary rampart of a smaller scale. This fits only about a meter, meter and a half wide. Uh, no evidence of timber in it. But uh, it's odd. It's been covered by a later ditch dug inside the fort. The north rampart was totally different. There's been a passage of time, this dotted line running along, it is actually a secondary topsoil. And this rampart is much smaller. This is an outer stone, inner stone. Lots of plaques, burnt schist, masses of burnt schist all over the place. Heat cracked stones, vitrification, absolutely nothing, no occupation associated with it at all. So I think it was different, you know, it was built at a different time. Then we move forward and it's possible a phase five, but it's very, very faint. All we can base it on are two dates. And I say it's very, very difficult to say yes, there's definitely something here because there was no particular structures relating to it. This is the, the burnt door of where one day it came from. It looks like a kind of wicker door, maybe. Not sure, because this was a, a drawing done on site, so I've never, I don't remember seeing this at all. The date for that one was that. So, yes, there is something going on, but we don't really know what. But we did get a few other features vague features, nothing definite, which could point to possibly, yes, yeah, something else, but 
because this whole internal area was ploughed later on, we've lost anything there. Because we did put these trenches were put down. I keep saying me, but no, it wasn't me. <laughs> but uh, I say there's nothing in, left in the interior. It's only on the outer edges and on the knoll. Well, now, some of the problems that I've encountered working on this site, and they're not easy. Major problem. So there were a lot of the samples taken. Now, as you can see, 163 samples and very few results. And this is the reason. Sorry, Fraser. So when you think you're putting stuff safely, it doesn't always work. So it's, it's sad that so much, you know, has, was lost. It's, uh, it's making life kind of difficult to publish it because it's just sheer chance that we found some timber in one of the storage bins uh, where all the small finds were. Otherwise, we couldn't have de redated some of the timbers from the rampart. This is a problem I'm having. I'm having to decode the top and put on the original numbers of the context and then transfer it in not the other layers then. And now context, you move forward in time. And so it's a matter of redoing the whole site into new context. So it's taking longer than we thought and making up context sheets and putting as much information as I can get onto these so that people can try and understand it better, hopefully. Uh, same with the feature sheets, I'm, I'm doing that. And I say it's taken an awful lot longer than I thought, and that's why there's been a bit of a delay, as well as not having enough samples to date. One thing about Calican site archives, there are photos, and there are some well-known faces of people who actually started on the site when they were youngsters. And uh, some of them are retired now. <laughs> Uh, Trevor Cowie, who I'm waiting for a report from, <laughs> uh, Gordon Barclay, well known now for his work in, in World War I and II, Bill Lindsay, uh, Alec Mackay, who's working a bit sometimes with Fraser, St. Peter Yeoman, James Kemmerly, all great names. Also, we should have great books. Robert Stevenson was a regular visitor every year, he used to come. And uh, he said uh, that he liked it, so he brought Joanna Close books, Audrey Henshaw, Ewan Mackay, Helen Nisbet, all names from not quite the past, they're still on the go. <laughs> and finishing off, the pebbling still survives and you can still walk on it. Uh, so it showed it was a good idea to put that down on the site. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.